Hello and welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Wednesday, February 13th, 2019, and this is episode 90. My name is Carol and my Ravelry name is Knits and Pearls. The show notes for this and every episode can be found on the blog and also in the episode thread in the Ravelry group. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me a private message on Ravelry, leave a comment on YouTube, or post a comment in the group, and I will do my best to get back to you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today on this sunny but cold and windy day here in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada, about an hour's drive east of Vancouver. As you can see from the opening footage, we received our first significant snowfall of the winter. The snow started in earnest uh, Monday evening and didn't stop till about four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And then um, we had a few more inches overnight. In fact, it was still snowing when I got up this morning at about six o'clock by about quarter to seven it had stopped and then the skies cleared up and the sun came out so it's actually really beautiful out there. Uh, our usual pattern is to get snow followed by rain and so we don't usually get a chance to enjoy the fresh snow before the slush begins but uh, in this case we have a day or two before that's supposed to happen so definitely enjoying the nice bright white world out there. Um, I had so many people reach out to me last week. Uh, thank you for doing so. I am so happy you enjoyed the um, National Geographic moments that I included in last week's podcast. Uh, I especially got comments about feeding the hummingbird uh, by hand. That was so exciting and um, I actually managed to do that again this week. Uh, the other morning it, I was just, I'd opened up the blinds and was just going to open up the uh, patio door to put the hummingbird feeder out in the morning. And before I even got the door open, the hummingbird was around. So I thought, well, here's a good, good chance to try this again. So sure enough, I stuck my hand out with the little hummingbird feeder in it. And the hummingbird came right back and stayed a little longer this time. But then I took pity. Well, A, it was cold. I wanted to get back inside and be... I didn't want to freak it out too much and so I just hung up the regular hummingbird feeder. Now um, I posted this picture in the group on the episode thread from last week's group. So this is a picture that appeared in our local paper this past week and as you can see there are probably what 15 or so hummingbirds gathered around this hummingbird feeder. And um, my first impression was, wow, isn't that cool? And then my second thought was, wow, how did they all stay so still for so long? And why are they all cooperating? Because as I mentioned last week, um, the hummingbird feeder is a constant uh, battleground as different hummingbirds try and claim it. They're very, po they're very possessive. So um, I didn't think too much more about it till we went to the um, store on uh, the weekend uh, where we buy our bird seed. And um, my husband mentioned it to the woman that was um, behind the counter and mentioned this, mentioned this um, photo. And she said, yeah, she said, I think this woman... Um, puts a higher concentration of sugar in her hummingbird nectar and she said it's really not good for the hummingbirds. The first thing is that it takes longer to digest and so the hummingbirds will sit still instead of feeding while the nectar ingests, or um, digests and the second thing is that it's really tough on their kidneys. So I had read somewhere or heard somewhere that in the cold weather it's a good idea to up your sugar a little bit. So rather than the quarter cup to one cup ratio, one quarter cup sugar to one cup of water ratio that I normally do, I had put mine up to one third of a cup of sugar to one cup of water. And she said even that's too high. So just sort of a PSA here, if you are feeding hummingbirds, don't exceed the quarter cup sugar to one cup ratio. It's really not good for them and you'll 
may end up harming or even killing the very creatures that you're trying to help at this uh, time of year. So just a heads up, um, it's, it's very cool to see so many hummingbirds around a feeder, but she said it's sort of the equivalent of feeding them cotton candy instead of, you know, something nutritious that it really isn't good for them in the long run. So uh, learn something new every day, right? So I'd rather have fewer hummingbirds, but know that they are healthy as, as far as I'm concerned. And certainly these last few days, I've seen them constantly at the feeder and have continued to swap out one feeder for another as one thaws and the other freezes and, and try and keep a at least partially thawed feeder out there at all times during the day and then we bring them in at night. So I feel like we've done a, I've done a lot of talking and we've hardly even started. Um, I have the new to you craft along to talk to you about and then I also have a couple of finished projects and quite a few works in progress and a little bit of reading and stuff. So let's get to it, shall we? So the new to you craft along is taking place in the Ravelry group right now until the um, last day of February. And it's all about trying something new, a new craft or a new technique within a craft that you're already familiar with. And uh, you can uh, show off or talk about your whips, your works in progress, but the new to you part has to have taken place sometime between January 1st and February 28th. So for example, you may have started a pair of socks last year, but done a new to you uh, toe or new to you heel or a new to you bind off um, sometime this year, in which case, uh, by all means, share it with us and get your name in the running to win um, a prize. And it's not about finishing things, it's just about trying new things. And so there's just a chatter thread. And once I close the thread at the end of February, I will draw for two winners. And the uh, winners could win, the one winner will win their choice of these three uh, notions pouches. And this set of stitch markers and it's hard to show you but there are little silver rings with um, hearts on them and one of the stitch markers has like a lobster claw that you can use as a progress keeper so that's one prize and the other one is um, <laughs> as always I'm looking for places to put things the other is this um, llama stitch marker I think I called it an alpaca last week, but it actually says llama right on it. <laughs> and your choice of one of these four project bags. Um, this one's a little bit different because it has this fabric at the top and the panel in the middle. And the other three have this fabric throughout and then it's lined with this fabric. So this one again is the um, water scene and then I have the street scene and then this one here with the people in the park so um that will be the second winner win their choice of project bags and the uh, llama stitch marker so I did take some pictures this morning and I will post those in the um, cal thread for you to get a little bit of a closer look. So, uh, looking around, what should I talk about first? Maybe I'll talk about the obvious finished project. I'm gonna stand up, actually. This is my Cedarburg shawl. I finished it this past week. Um, it is knit from a Sweet Georgie Yarns Tough Love Sock in the gold mine color, which is this yellow. Um, smitten, which is this um, variegated here, and then the dark purple is uh, Impulse of Delight Summit Sock in the dark amethyst colorway. And the pattern is by Tabitha Hedrick. It was a mystery knit along uh, in 2017. 
Um, my biggest thing I can say about this shawl is, wow, is it ever big. <laughs> uh, the pattern says it blocks out to, I think it was 102 inches wide by about 24 deep. Uh, mine is definitely wider than that. I can hold, double it and hold it in my wingspan and I'm, it, that's about just over five feet, five foot three inches tall. So it's pretty big and I honestly was really struggling to find a way to wear it because I was trying to wrap it, wrap it, wrap it and it just was so many layers and so bulky. So what I ended up doing, and actually works out pretty well, is I took the shawl, folded it in half, so I took it, folded it in half this way, see there's the fold, here are the ends, I stuck the ends through a little twist <laughs> and fed the ends through here. Whoops, one's caught. There we go. Uh, it doesn't look quite as nice as when I first did it, but um, that's how I'm wearing it. Um, I'm going to open it up and show it to you all done and blocked. And you'll get a sense of just how large this shawl is. So, it starts out a little. <laughs> and then it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> now, I have to say, it, I... I I like it. I don't know how much use I'll get out of it. It is so large and unwieldy and it's too bad. And maybe I should have realized just how big it would be. I mean, it is three skeins of, almost three skeins of fingering weight yarn. Uh, but I just wasn't prepared for just how long it would be. The uh, length this way is not so bad. It's the um, width, I guess. In any case, um, <laughs> I will wear it now, <laughs> and I'm just going to have to decide what I'm going to do with it, because I'm not sure if it's one that I will uh, keep and wear, and so I might uh, seek out someone who might be interested in owning it uh, more than, and will get more use out of it than I am. But Having said that, I enjoyed knitting the pattern very much and uh, working with the yarns. Um, just a little sad that it did, I did end up with something a little more wearable for me. Um, I'm actually going to turn, I think you can see that, yeah, there's the lace uh, part on the bottom, on the end of it. I think that turned out really pretty. So anyway. <laughs> That's, that's what I have <laughs> after all that. Um, got my snowman mug in honor of the snow. Yeah, I'm drinking, um, I made a, a chai latte. Haven't had a sip yet, so. It's good, but not very hot. I took too many takes trying to get this podcast off the ground. <laughs> it's cooled off a little. Um... The next finished project I have are the socks out of hand spun that I was knitting for uh, a woman that I curl with, Jan. So she had had this uh, hand spun yarn she bought and asked me if I would knit her a pair of socks. So they did not take very long at all to knit up. It's more or less a worsted weight yarn. Uh, so that's sock number one. The pretty it was really fun working with this yarn. And uh, there's sock number two. I just love this sort of bright corally pink here. So there's the pair. <laughs> um, I did not use um, or follow a specific pattern for these. I, um, I um, 
looked at a couple of different patterns. First one was Rye by Tin Can Knits because I was looking for uh, numbers to use for the circumference and landed on 44 as that number um, for the size I was making and then I remembered that I had the um, On Your Toes Socks pattern by Ann Bud, which is where I first learned to do this um, yarn over short row heel that I like. And I checked out the pattern to see how many stitches to leave unwrapped when I was doing the heel for this size. And luckily one of the sizes that was, or one of the stitch counts that was uh, given for that pattern was 44. And so I was able to um, follow that to knit these socks. It was so funny, I took these to curling last week to get Jan to try that on. If you remember, I had one of the socks done up to and including the heel and then one sock done up to the point where I had to do the heel. So I didn't want to go any further till I made sure that they were going to fit her. So sure enough, they were fine. And so while we were waiting for our dinner afterwards, I started to knit the heel on the second sock. And um, I was showing a couple of women who were interested. So I got, got along, I got the, the increases, or that's not the right word. I got all the yarn overs done for the first half of the heel. And then I was just starting to turn the heel to to uh, complete the second side of it. And then I couldn't remember how to do the purling three together that you do on the wrong side. I just was blanking and I, I started to do it and then it's like, mm, no, this doesn't look right. And I, I couldn't do it. So I put it away and then of course when I got home and picked it up again, boom, just came right back to me. But isn't it funny how something you've done so many times without thinking, when you actually need to think about it or show somebody, it's gone. But anyway, um, as you can see, I did finish them up and so I'm sure Jan will be thrilled to get them this week. She was really excited to see them um, so far just went and warmed up my tea. That's much better. <laughs> uh, so I found it kind of hard to concentrate on any one project for too long this week and so I seem to have done something sort of different every day. Um, I did work on a couple of sweaters so I'll just talk about them fairly briefly. Uh, first one, of course you've been watching, you will have seen this through stone cardigan that I've been plugging away at. I'm in the land of beige, which does not make for very exciting knitting. The land of beige stocking stitch is what it is. Anyway, the yarn, uh, this pattern's by Bristol Ivy, and then the yarn is a Craftsy yarn. Uh, this is part of a kit I bought on Craftsy. So this is their Cloudborn Highland Sport. This is the Shayla Heather color. That's the main color. And then there are three uh, contrasting colors, um, which are uh, this light color is uh, taupe heather, the darker is stone heather, and then that pop of teal is ocean. So there's not a lot to show you on this other than I've put more work into the body. Uh, I've been working on the waist shaping, which is not in the pattern, it's something I've added. But you can see the body taking shape there, uh, so it's easier to actually show you what it looks like. Um, I still have not sewn these pockets down, I've been avoiding that like the plague, but I did tuck my little ball of yarn in there to keep it from uh, rolling around. <laughs> Comes in, those pockets are coming in handy for that. Uh, anyway, that's all I've done this week is added a few more inches to this. Um, I am anxious. Whoops, I'm just dropping drop some stitches here. Let me just grab them before I lose them. Um, I'm anxious to get to the next stage, which is uh, adding in the sleeves and doing the yoke. So who knows? Maybe by next week I'll be there. I just think I need to sit down again and give it um, a day or two of lots of knitting and I will be there. 
Um, the next sweater I've been working on is my uh, So Faded uh, second time around. Um, I haven't worked on it for a while. It is knit out of um, Hedgehog Fiber Sock in three colorways. The first color is, um, let me just see if I remember, I did write it down. Oh, Vengeance. This color is Vengeance. And then I faded into Truffle. And then I'm working now on Mal or Malice, yeah. I just think it's, I always say it, but it just sounds so dark. Um, last time I showed it to you, I had added in the third color. And after initially alternating it with the second color, I had started alternating from either end of this. Uh, ball and that's what I had ended up doing for this middle section because it was pooling in a not very attractive way. Um, I think I mentioned last time I showed it to you that I might take that out and redo it and that's what I did and I've actually just been knitting right from the ball uh, without doing any alternating for the last uh, several inches and I'm happy with how the colors are distributing there. So I'm going to do that as long as I like it and if I find that it's pooling too much in an unattractive way then I will start doing that and alternating rows from the middle or from the one end of the skein essentially and the other end. So I just would pull it out from the uh, middle of the cake. This color is always so hard to show. There you go. You can see it has a lot of different shades in it and I'll Hold this up closer to the um, camera too. I'm not sure how well you could see the colors there. There you can see that they really it's not really just dark purple. There's actually a lot going on in there. But yeah I'm quite happy with how that's going now. I was a little bit unsure at first with the dark color in there but um, I keep laying it out sort of um, in the living room where the light is good and um, I think it will be fine. I'm, I'm actually quite happy with it. Now that I started working on it again, I'm kind of anxious to uh, see it through. The only thing is, is that because it's so dark, I find it hard to work on, um, like at night. I like to, to knit on it when the light's good, and then that way I can really see how the colors are knitting up. So it's a little bit limiting in that respect. Um... And then I've been knitting on a couple of other pairs of socks. And I've actually um, finished two socks, <laughs> one from each pair. So the first is my uh, hazelnut socks. This is the uh, fifth pattern from the hand knit socks or handmade sock society by Helen Stewart. And this yarn I've used for that is from Magpie, and it's Swanky Sock in the Hell's Bells colorway. I just love how this has turned out. Absolutely, um, I'm in love with this sock. Uh, I love the yarn, I love the pattern, I love everything about it, the combination. So um, I did cast on the second sock, but I've only done a couple of rows of ribbing so far. And once again, I am recording on a Wednesday, which is garbage day around here, and I see the garbage trucks just pulled up across the street, so you might hear a little noise. The other sock that I've been working on is the sixth sock from the Handmade Sock Society, and that's the uh, Red Robin socks. So I'm knitting those out of uh, Knit Picks stroll in the Dove Heather colorway and also Cascade Heritage in color 5607 and that's red. Um, so you can see I have one sock complete in that one and then I have, whoops I think I just jiggled the camera, sorry about that, and then I've got this far on the second sock. So I'm just working on the gusset now. I've done the contrast heel. So um, you can see this is, I'm um, doing magical loops. So you can see a little line where I've changed from one needle to another. 
but on this side you can see an even more significant line and that's the beginning and end of round and you can see that the pattern is offset by just like by stitch vertically as you change from one round to another that's just how knitting works and if that kind of thing um, bugs you as much as it bugs me here's a little hint to uh, sort of hide that that part inside on the inside of your leg so I've knit the first sock as written and then the second sock when I went to add in my contrast I slipped half of the stitches from one needle to the next so that I was starting half a round in and then I began my heel and so when my socks are completed I will have um, the one sock will have sort of the seam if you will on the inside of the leg and then this one will also have the seam on the inside of the leg um, and so from the outside they will look um, seamless, seamless although you know like I say there is this line here but I think that will disappear somewhat once I've blocked it. I know it's a picky thing but that's just my personality. If you can avoid something like that um, why not? And um, so I'm glad I took you know it take, doesn't take very long and yet in the end they will be symmetrical, I guess, mirror images, as opposed to identical. That is so good. All right, um, that is the end of my knitting, I think. Let me make sure. Yes, but I have some quilting to share with you this week, so I will be right back with that. So I had told myself that I wasn't allowed to start a new quilt until I'd finished my old one. And all I have to do on it is stitch, hand stitch around the binding, but I just have not been in the mood for it. But um, Sunday I was just itching to start a new quilt and so I gave in to the urge and just let myself have fun. Um, so a while ago I had shown you this um, that, or a layer cake I had bought of the Lilac Ridge collection by Moda. So layer cake is a stack of 10 inch pre-cut squares. And so then I went searching online for some free patterns that uh, featured layer cakes. And I came across a, a video tutorial called the Double Slice Layer Cake by, um, it was by Missouri Star Company. And what you do is you take your 10 inch square and you cut a strip um, that's three and a half inch wide and then you're left with a strip that's six and a half inches wide and then you randomly join those together. So you match up every one to another one. And then you take your um, square that you now have or more or less a square and you cut it down the middle into two five inch strips and then you randomly join two together Oops. and then because I am doing the um, quilt as you go method which you do all your quilting on your squares before you sew them all together I went ahead and put them on to batting and then I used this decorative stitch along the seam lines to quilt them. Now the video says to randomly join all of them together. Um, if you've been watching for any length of time you'll know that I'm not exactly a random kind of person. So uh, they suggested that you start have, have on your first cut you take the stack from your layer cake one directions and so you basically start from the top of the stack and you join it to the strips that you've cut um, that are at the bottom of the stack and you kind of just work towards the middle I guess on each one and if you come across two that are too similar you can skip and find one that you like better 
So I did start out that way and then I decided I wanted a little more control. Go figure. So I took some time to um, to match them up and then when I went came time to join them into the final square I um, was very careful not to make any two exactly the same. And so it took a while to match up all the different prints but I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, here's another one. So there's another one. These are three squares that are left over from the first half. So what I essentially did is I I did all the squares for half of the quilt and I still have a, this stack of um, squares to sew together, sew the final two pieces together and then put onto the quilt batting. Just because I really, I just wanted to not do the same thing for such a long period. I wanted to break up the process so I wouldn't get too bored. And then I went ahead and I joined the first, um, I guess there's six times three, 18, first 18 squares together. And you can see it just forms kind of like a real crazy quilt kind of look to it. I'm going to put this right over my face <laughs> so you can get a better look. <laughs> look how pretty. I mean, there's so many pretty um, prints in here. I love the plaids. I love that. So anyway, so I basically have half of my quilt sewn together. And then the next thing I'll do is do the other half and join them all together. And then I think what I'm going to end up doing is adding a band, a fairly wide band on the outside of the whole quilt because I want this for the top of our queen size bed and I, this isn't going to be quite big enough as is. And then I did buy, um, oh, it's put away. I did buy um, a, I think a yard of this print to use as binding. And I'm hoping a yard will be enough. If not, I'll pick up something else. So I was thinking of looking for a cream about this shade to do a, a um, border on all around the whole thing before I do the binding and then find some kind of complementary uh, backing. So um, yeah, had a ton of fun with this on uh, Sunday and Monday and I haven't touched it since. <laughs> Got interested in something else. That's kind of how it's been. The good part of having sort of the bad weather is there's been a um, lot of uh, like good reasons to stay indoors and and not have to go out too much. But then um, there's so many things I want to do. I've just kind of been going from project to project to project, depending on what day it is and how I feel about it. <laughs> All right. Oh, acquisitions. I have something to show you. I think I mentioned last week that Sweet Georgia Yarns had their annual kind of surprise sale where you get potlucks and um, things that are dye pot mistakes and potlucks. Those colors that um, didn't dye up quite the way they're supposed to. And so I um, ordered, I got them just a few days later. So um, this was the first pack. This is the Cash Lux Fine. Maybe I'll pull it out of the package just to give you a better look. It's actually funny because you don't get a choice of colors, but they do send you a pack of two that are complementary. So this one is called Modern Mandarin. It's purples and oranges. And then this one's called Persimmon. It's quite a bright, real true carrot orange. What's ironic is I got the same colorway last year in the um, Tough Love sock, which I have not done anything with it yet. So I have to say when I opened the 
and I opened my box and saw these. I wasn't a hundred percent thrilled because as a rule orange is not really my color. On the other hand they really are beautiful and they really do look nice together and I'm sure I will find something to do with them. I can't be too disappointed. I mean it's lovely yarn any way you look at it. But I was happier with my um, other set of two. These are the um, Tough Love Sock. And the this one is Deep Cove. And actually in the light, I couldn't see this in the lighting when I first looked at it, but there's a lot of tonality to that. And then this one is called um, Storm Chaser. And again, really nice colors in there. And they go together nicely. So I was really pleased with this set. Um, so I guess one out of two ain't bad. And it's not that I hate the others. I just like these more. And these are definitely more kind of my colors. But, um, you know, that's the thing. It's like doing a yarn club. You're taking a chance um, that you're going to like what you get. And sometimes you do and sometimes... So I guess sometimes you like some more than others. That's probably the, the most diplomatic way of saying that. <laughs> and I don't hate these. I just love these more. So anyway, it's always fun to uh, get mail or yarn in the mail. So I can't complain too much. Um, but that's all I've, all I've gotten. Um, while I've been working on the uh, sewing, both project bags and quilting and stuff. I've been listening to an audiobook, and it's the um, my most recent in the um, Molly Murphy mystery series by Reese Bowen. And so it's called um, Hush Now, Don't You Cry. And um, Molly's just gotten married, and she and her husband are on their honeymoon. Uh, they were invited to stay at an estate of one of the New York's aldermen who happens to get murdered. They're on site and she's not supposed to be doing detective work anymore because now she's married woman, uh, but she can't help herself. So um, I'm about, I think about an hour, an hour and a half uh, till the end of that one. So um, I've been enjoying that. I haven't listened to one of those for quite a while. So it was fun to get back to that. And then I've been reading the next Agatha Christie, which is The Body in the Library. And I definitely have read this one before, more than once. Um, I still don't remember who done it, but early on there was a reference to, to um, a girl who had gone missing. And it sort of twigged a memory, and I feel like that comes into play at some point during the book, but I can't remember how. Um, basically the plot of this one is there's a Gos I think it's Gosington Hall. I'm not sure what it says there. Some kind of... Is that a movie though? Gosington Hall? I can't remember the name of the place. Let me see if I can find it easily. Yeah, Gosington Hall. So um, basically a young woman's strangled corpse is found in the library of Gossington Hall in the morning and nobody knows this person nobody knows how that body got there and so um, Miss Marple this time is on the scene to help solve the mystery so um, enjoying that one about hmm, halfway through so I guess that leads me to what's been going on this week. Um, obviously the big deal is the weather. Um, we don't get snow as a rule very often during a winter and we don't often don't get such a big dump of it. So it's been kind of a novelty. Um, even shoveling's kind of fun when you don't have to do it very often. Uh, and like I say, that today it's just beautiful and sunny and it just is so pretty to look at. Um, and then as you can see, both the uh, bird feeders and the hummingbird feeder have both been busy. I might have said that earlier. Um, anyway, it's been fun doing some bird watching too. Uh, last Wednesday, I was I was curling with my sister again for her team and uh, we won again. So that was 
four in a row that I games that I'd uh, curled in that that our team had won. And then unfortunately that streak came to an end on Thursday. We pretty well all of us had a really terrible game and um, oh well the company for dinner was good after because um, generally what we do is you sit with the team that you played against and have dinner with them after. So that was fun. Uh, this weekend we on Saturday we took the grandkids to go see the new Lego movie uh, and that was fun too. Um, we'd never taken them to a movie before and the youngest she just turned four and I think she's been to two movies before but man we're, they were all excellent like really well behaved and, and even Emily just she sat through the whole thing. I mean she was a little bit restless at times and shifting her inner seat and wanted the booster seat and then didn't want the booster seat but in general she just was just stayed in her seat and watched the whole show um, so that was kind of fun and then they came back here and we uh, had supper while their parents went out for dinner um, and then something kind of exciting last night um, my oldest sister Anna Marie and her husband and Cameron and I had talked about maybe going to see uh, Paul McCartney. He's coming to Vancouver in July and uh, we knew tickets would be hard to get and then uh, Anna Marie contacted me sort of late last night to say if you had an American Express card you could get early tickets and uh, she used to have one but doesn't anymore and I don't have one so we were trying to figure out someone we might know that had them had one um, long story short is a little while later she uh, got in touch with me again to say that she'd gotten hold of a friend that had bought them on our behalf and uh, so um, yeah we're going to Paul McCartney in July so that's kind of cool um, my husband especially is really keen on doing that and um, I know last time he was in town he put on just a great show from all accounts and I just think it'll be neat to see um, one of the Beatles right um, so yeah looking definitely looking forward to that it's a long ways in the future but it's something to look forward to uh, other than that not really much going on this week um, as I said the weather kind of kept us in nice cozy house um, Saturday I thought the roof was going to blow off. It was so windy here. The Arctic outflow winds again. Really, really cold and really, really windy. Uh, they've definitely calmed down since then, but we're still um, getting some wind these uh, days. Yesterday the uh, first lot of snow was super windy and blowing everywhere. Um, last night was still somewhat windy but not quite as bad so it settled more evenly than the first lot. <laughs> um, yeah so lots coming up actually on the weekend. We have a few things going on so I'll have some things to tell you about next week and um, yeah not much more to say about that. Uh, so I will leave you with something good and my something good this week is sort of the a child's uh, lack of inhibition and the joy that they can express so easily. So um, like I said we took the kids to the movie and afterwards while the credits were rolling um, Emily saw a couple of kids that were dancing on the area in front of the um, screen and she said I want to do that so we were way in the back of the theater so we uh, got made our way down there and she went right there by that time I think she was the only one and she danced through like a whole song just didn't care who was watching she was just dancing for the joy of it and it was really fun watching her she's a good little dancer actually she got some pretty good moves <laughs> so yeah it just kind of uh, it was just fun to just watch her just dance for joy really what could be better than that 
So on that happy note, I am going to say goodbye for this week. Thanks again to all of you for watching and thank you as always for reaching out. I always love hearing from you. Uh, it's not too late to join in the new to you craft along. So come on by and show us uh, what you've been up to. We've actually had quite a few different projects being shared in there. Um, and I've just loved it. Some, there's many that things that I've never tried either. And there is, um, some of them, it makes me want to try them. Like I've never done brioche. There was some brioche shared. Um, trying to think what else. Some intarsia. Um, I'm blanking, but I'm enjoying seeing everybody's, oh, uh, the Selbu mittens. Those are really cool too. I've often thought about uh, knitting one of those. So, or knitting a pair of those. Actually, the person who knit them said she's only doing one. One was enough, but uh, she did a great job and tried something new. And I think that's what it's all about. Whether you like it or not, at least now you know you don't like it. Isn't that what we tell our kids? Uh, we used to say you have to try three bites <laughs> and then you can say you don't like it. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. Thanks again for watching. See you next week. Take care till then. Bye.